You know, it's an incredible thing, but 90% of world trade is transported by ships at sea. But that means surging levels of shipping emissions, bad for the environment and worse for your health. In fact, toxic pollution from ships kills tens of thousands of people every year. I'm Nick Clark in Sweden to see how the port city of Gothenburg is cleaning and greening its act and making the air sweeter for city residents. There's been a port here for centuries. Ocean trade is what makes Gothenburg tick. It handles 11,000 ships every year. In fact, two containers a minute pass through this port 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So Edward, good to meet you. How's it going? Good to meet you. Most so the, welcome. The port of Gothenburg is very port impressive. As a small country, we're dependent on good connections to the rest of the world. We would export a lot of uh, wood material, steel, cars in this instance, because we have Volvo here in Gothenburg, and import, of course, clothing, food, the normal stuff coming from East Asia and further away. It's interesting, isn't it? Because when you think of shipping, you think of it being clean, a clean form of transport, but that's not precisely the case, is it? Shipping has always been stuck, more or less, with the worst type of oil, heavy fuel oil. Heavy fuel oil has a large share of sulfur content. This has, just in the recent 10 years, been lifted up as a problem. Around the world, even when ships are docked, they keep their engines running. Their emissions a big factor in heart and lung disease in port communities. Here at Gothenburg, they've pioneered a new system. Some ships can plug into green energy generated onshore, so they don't need to burn fuel. They will actually take the cord now, grabbing it and pulling it into the vessel in order to hook it up to the electricity grid of the city. So they're taking power from the city from and the city feeding grid, the ship. Feeding the ship. Simple so that as you, that. And just, simple as just that. plug it in like a plug at home. Plug in the cord, that's it. And it's not only electricity that comes from onshore. Gothenburg has a public hot water supply that's connected too for onboard heating. I meet engineer Ingemar Sorensen. The ship is not so good uh, isolated, so in the winter time it's taking a lot of energy to, to the public area. So that means with the onshore power supply, oh. you've got electricity coming from onshore, oh, obviously, yes, but yes. it's not cranked up from the ship, oh. and now you've got hot water and heating hot coming water. from the yes. city as so well. So I don't need to, to burn uh, the oil-fired uh, boiler. At on, all? On, no, no. Yeah. Oh, that's incredible. Oh, yeah. Incredible. Down, down into the bowels of the ship. This is where everything is controlled from on the ship. This is yeah. how it's powered and so, uh, the whole work. Engine and, uh, engine. What's this here? So this is the one that's in operation when you're at sea. When you come to shore, you shut that down and use the power supply that we've been seeing and the hot water. It's really noisy. Really noisy. Fully connected up, it's time to turn off the ship's engines. There you go. There you go. That's the now sound. It's down. That's the sound of renewable energy. More and more ports are now following Gothenburg's green lead. Just recently, maritime law also changed, making it illegal to sail in certain waters, including Scandinavia's, with high sulfur fuel. And this, amongst other things, makes the port a much nicer place to work. It's a safety officer on a bicycle. Christina, hello. Hello. Thanks for coming. So, Christina, you've worked here quite a few years? Yes, 16 or 17 years. So now. you must have seen a fair few changes over that time. Yes, I have. Yeah, in what way particularly? Yeah, especially about fuel, how's that changing? Well, the fuel, it's been much, what shall we say, finer, and the smell is better. When I started here, we could smell. When the bunker barge were here, loading, it was a smell. But now, nearly nothing. So that's because the sulfur content has been taken yes. out? Is that the, that's the thing? That's a part of it, yes. Right. So it, I always liked my job, but now it's even better, because... <laughs> It's um, not so much smell. And to make sure ships obey the regulations, Gothenburg has pioneered a special sniffer box at the entrance to the harbour. Oh, good to see Hi you. There, good to see you. Hi. This is stunning. Hi. I can see why you chose to have your office here. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yes, it's obvious, I think. <laughs> the objective is actually to measure ships that are passing by in the ship plane out here. 
the ships passes and the smoke from the chimney blows into the inlet that we have so on the roof there. So that's a critical part of the operation right there. Right. Can we see that? Sure. You're welcome. Okay. So the air comes through this heated tubing here, uh -huh. and it goes into this yellow box here. And that's, that is the sniffer box? Yeah. And right now the ships are only allowed to have 0.1% sulfur in the fuel. And it's actually, it's like a revolution, it's an order of magnitude lower than actually just two months ago. If we look here right now... Oh, it's coming past. The, the, the ship is coming past. Now we will just hit by the ship trim. You can see now he, he identified, he measured it was an, a certain amount of sulfur in the fuel. And he identified also that it's a ship standing Atlantic. Yeah, it's coming from that ship. It's following the, the, the criteria and we would not, uh, we would let this ship go. It yeah. will not be put on our blacklist. The, the measurements will direct the port state control authorities to which ship they should board and they should make some thorough in investigations, oh. take fuel samples and so on. In most ports around the world, the dirty air does not stop when the ship docks. Freight is then typically distributed by road with yet more emissions. The difference is here that more than 50% of freight coming in and out of Gothenburg is transported by train. It's incredible how long it is. How many containers are there? About uh, 50 containers on the train. And how long is it in total, the train? Total is 600 meters. 600 meters? 600 meters, yes. So you wouldn't want to be the guy sitting in the car as it's coming through the level crossing? No, that's, you can see him sitting there. Right, yeah. yeah. It's going to be a long way. So these are all exports coming out of Sweden to be shipped overseas? Yes, that's correct. With uh, steel products and uh, wood products, mostly. It's environmentally friendly, most importantly. Yes. But secondly, it's more efficient anyway. Yes. So I mean, why don't ports around the world adopt this process? I think they will, because in one train you need to have uh, 40 trucks instead like this yeah. to just this train. At the port, container after container is lifted and shifted as imports and exports come and go. Gothenburg has been a trading hub for centuries and it's been fascinating to see how it's changing and adapting to the times. And not only adapting, but actually laying down the environmental gauntlet to other ports around the world to clean up our sea air.